this is a the next episode in the VW Golf 8 software update saga. This time we have had um, recall update 90S8 and 91CU. So uh, I'll show you the uh, the new version numbers in a minute. Here are the uh, here are the old ones all combined onto one cut and paste. And here are the new ones. And what's actually changed is the device part number has gone up to the same as it was before with a K on the end. The software version is now 1899. Navigation database has gone to uh, 23.2 which is obviously number two in 2023 media codec that and radio database that the uh, two buttons that were there on that screen before have now replaced been replaced by just this one button saying show all updates which I suspect is a bit like the Microsoft Windows check for updates button There aren't any updates. <laughs> okay, so that's where we are now. And uh, this is the uh, story of how we actually got to this point. Last year on holiday, we were presented with warning signals saying, electronic braking system failure. Contact your service department or something to that effect, which was a bit difficult when we were 190 miles from home. So... Uh, that was the fact that the electric brake and the auto hold weren't working. Normal brakes were okay. So, as it seemed to be working apart from that, I uh, decided to continue and the remaining two miles of our journey back to our hotel and see what happened. <laughs> Interestingly, we were in an uphill traffic jam at that point, so we had to do hill starts using the foot brake. Quite fun. So we got to our destination in the hope of using the usual IT trick of turning it off and back on again to see if it fixed it and it did so basically the thing was back to normal however while we were wandering around having parked the car I noticed a uh, missed call from our dealer saying we've noticed that you've had a warning light on your car do you want to report it and get it fixed um, so as I said, we're 190 miles from home, so we decided not to do that. So I ignored that for the moment. The only thought that I had at the time was the fact that we'd been driving through heavy rain and splashing through puddles on the side of the road and the water might have got into the brakes and confused them, but uh, uh, we'll never know that. The second event in this saga is uh, that we're driving round a few months later and got the warning sign, drive system failure. It's enough to make anybody panic, but uh, all that actually had happened was the ACC had stopped working. So uh, I drove home and uh, again, turned it off and on again, and it was okay. Another contact from the dealer saying, <laughs> do you want to get it fixed? So I didn't do anything about that at that time either. Anyway, sometime later I got an actual call from them and said, well, it's okay now, but uh, is there anything like a software update that could stop these things happening? So they had a look around and found that there, yes, there was a recall update and I could bring the car in and get it done. So I scheduled it to be done as part of my service. The things on the service included the update 91CU, which said eight hours. So when I took it in on the Wednesday morning at 8 o'clock, said, is it likely to be finished by uh, today with that, with that update? And they said, oh, it probably will be. But I got a phone call later to say that, uh, yeah, it was taking time and there was problems and they were waiting for a contact from head office or whatever with tests to be run. And I'd be advised. So the next morning I was informed that the test had been received and started. And then later that day they said, oh, the tests have all run okay now. 
and we've started the update, but it's not going to be ready today. So that was Thursday. So it wait, it had another night in hospital. And Friday morning, I had a call from them saying, the update is complete, and I was able to collect the car. So that was how we got there. And now uh, here are the consequences of it. First of all, of course, I had to, it had wiped out all my settings, and I had to re-register the thing and set it up again. Uh, but when I'd logged in, it restored my uh, my original settings. The ACC was no longer reacting to speed limits like it used to, and although they were switched on, I turned them off and turned them back on again. And that's that that seemed to fix it okay, so that worked uh, all right. Uh, the lane assist wasn't working. I turned that off and back on again, but that didn't that seem to have any effect. But about 300 miles later, the lane assist gradually started working again. Perhaps it was in its learning mode, but uh, it's about like it was before, and not all that impressive. But the big improvement so far detected in the limited time I've, uh, I've had it going since I've had this update is that the Android Auto now works wirelessly. You don't have to plug the phone in to the USB anymore. That's really good. And it uh, also seems better integrated. When you're using Google Navigation, the turn information is displayed on the, on the dashboard in the... Um, if you've got the navigation set up uh, to do uh, uh, route guidance or navigation on one of the areas of your net dashboard, it shows the turn information. So that's quite good. The uh, navigation speech seems to have changed. It's, 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 it went from a woman to a man. And it's, uh, it's speaking of road names is still a bit pedantic. Um, it's not doing like I described on a previous video, but they're saying B4163 type of uh, thing. So anyway, a fairly useful update. And now that it's happened, ironically, I've decided to change the car. Not the result of any of this, but life. So I'll leave that as a cliffhanger for next time. Hope this has been entertaining. <laughs>